Good afternoon everyone, my name is Chris Karas. Today I will be presenting the paper entitled Peer-to-Peer uh, -peer Federated Learning towards Decentralized Machine Learning on Edge Devices. Uh, this is a joint work with Aristides uh, Karas and the professors Konstantinos Giotopoulos, Dimitrios Solis, Konstantinos Konom and Spiros Hutas. Starting off with the structure of this uh, presentation, first we will see some introductory elements about federated learning and the motivation behind this work. Next, we will discuss uh, some preliminaries about federated learning and um, how it emerged and what it tries to solve. On the third section, we will um, go through experiments, uh, the initialization of the experiments, and how we constructed the real-world uh, case study using 10 Raspberry Pi devices. On the fourth section, we will see the experimental uh, results and the findings of them. Finally, we will discuss what was implemented, some extensions to the federated learning and some future directions. So starting off with the federated learning, which is widely known as FL, uh, this is an emerging technique that tries to assure user privacy and data integrity uh, in distributed machine learning environments. To do so, chunks of data are trained across edge devices, uh, where a high-performance cluster server maintains a local copy without exchange information with other parties. So in this work, we investigate a federated learning scenario in a real-world case study using 10 Raspberry Pi devices uh, which act as users. We employ the widely known Fade AVG algorithm which trains each client for several local epochs and then the weight of each model is aggregated. Uh, in general, the federated learning employs a distributed machine learning technique that, that allows uh, training to happen across several machines on a vast repository of decentralized uh, data existing on devices such as uh, mobile phones. Then a central server aggregates all these local updates and this process solves the issues of exposing data privacy, ownership and location. Uh, the aggregation process takes place by iteratively averaging weights from models via training each client for several local epochs. This is uh, employed in the widely known Fed AVG algorithm. For faster and more stable convergence, additional uh, aggregation methods have been developed uh, so far, including the ensemble distillation algorithm, which is known as Fed DF. Starting with the engineering part of this work, uh, initially we have a central high performance cluster server, HPC, and 10 Raspberry Pi uh, devices of Model 4. Each has 4 GB of memory and a quad-core uh, 1.5 GHz CPU. Uh, in particular, the PI device were connected on a different network from the HPC in order to simulate a more realistic communication scenario, where latency and other factors um, play a major role. The HPC server was responsible for aggregating the local models trained by the device and evaluating the result uh, the result of the global mo model MG. And here we have a graphic representation of the whole uh, structure. We have the first device as PI1, we have the data as KI, and the, the local model of this device, which is MKIL, for the number of uh, rounds. This is the number of the communication rounds between the PI device and the high performance cluster server. And then we have uh, the, the other devices up to the last one, which is PI10, which has which holds the data as KJ and the local model uh, MKJ. And this is basically how the models are trained across each device, and they exchange a local copy to the high performance cluster server um, until we we meet we meet the required uh, communication round and the threshold that, that we set. As per the uh, problem formulation in the data set, uh, to deploy the federated learning scenario, we select the CFAR 10 computer vision data set, which contains 32 times 32 images for uh, image classification into classes such as birds, cats, aeroplanes, and so on. Uh, the training data set contains 5K images for each of the 10 labels in the data set. So for the model M that we want to construct, a, uh, network with two, a neural network with two convolutional layers followed by two linear layers. So the aim here is to look for label flipping and whether the model can sample all uh, 10 labels effectively. 
In order to hunt the uh, unbalanced or noisy data, we introduced a client balancing Dirichlet sampling method, which presented here uh, briefly with the six uh, steps. Uh, initially, the total training dataset is divided into k evenly sized partitions among all the clients. And in order to simulate the varying levels of imbalance in the dataset, we use the Dirichlet distribution, uh, shown as Dir A. Uh, the length of the parameter vector A corresponds to the number of labels, in our case, 10 labels, and we let A i uh, to equal uh, A. And for every sample P we take uh, from the Dirichlet distribution uh, as a candidate uh, distribution over labels, um, and we set A uh, to determine the uniformity of the corresponding distribution. So we can observe for A close to zero, we will have one label uh, dominating, whereas for A close to infinity, P will be increasingly uniform. For the case where A equals one, every possible P is equally like to happen, and that's the scenario where we want to stick on. So for every client, P was sampled, making the lab, uh, label distribution different for every client. On to the experiments, uh, we test for two conditions, initially for all devices over Ethernet and for uh, all devices connected uh, over Wi-Fi. Um, as for uh, reference, the Ethernet speed was 100 uh, megabps as per download and upload speed and the Wi-Fi scenario, um, the speed was 10 megabps as per uh, download and upload speed. So we wanted to test whether this would affect the accuracy of the model. Here we have the graphic representation where uh, it uh, depicts the experiments conducted uh, using the PI system created. Note that these uh, were time restricted with set a threshold at 50 minutes and as a result we have conducted a variety of communication cycles. The lines here represent the average accuracy of three repetitions while the shaded regions in the figures uh, denote the best and worst repetitions at any given period. Moreover, the figures uh, depict the number of rounds L uh, completed by each experiment before we reach the 50-minute uh, uh, timeout, the threshold that we set uh, as a timeout uh, value. Here we have the case where local epochs occur on the Raspberry device, uh, Raspberry Pi device uh, across Ethernet. Um, with blue, we have uh, one full local epoch with more communication uh, rounds, 130. Well, on the other case, we increase the epochs and we decrease the communication rounds. So we want to see if there is an overhead between the epochs and the, uh, the number of uh, rounds for communication. As we can observe from the figure uh, here on the left-hand side, we can observe that one full epoch with uh, many, communications round, many communication rounds has the highest performance across uh, the other three experiments where it peaked at 60% uh, as accuracy, while the other three um, experiments have a lower uh, accuracy. It's surprisingly on the um, E40 uh, um, case that the accuracy was really low. Uh, it peaked at just 40% accuracy. And we, want, we, we can observe from that that it's not the communication round that uh, decreases the accuracy, but it's the uh, turning on the device and the multiple um, epochs on the device. So we have to find an optimal spot between the epochs and the number of the learning rounds. As per the case for the Wi-Fi, um, the experiments show that they are close uh, to the case as the Ethernet um, experiments. Um, surprisingly, though, that the case of the 10 uh, epochs, 10 full epochs, peaked higher than the case of one epochs. We presume that this is because of the low speed of the Wi Fi, so that the um, aggregated weights took longer to. Um, get transferred to the HPC server. That's why the first uh, case where 
one uh, fully poach with 50 communication rounds uh, picks lower than the second one. And again, for the case where we have 40 epochs, the accuracy was uh, kind of low compared to the other uh, experiments. Moving on to the varying clients, we test for a uh, different number of clients. So initially, we started this paper with five Raspberry Pi uh, devices which act as clients. And then we increased to 10 where we, had, we found an uh, optimal number in order to do the experiments. Conducting the, the experiments though, we checked whether increasing the number once again uh, would affect the overall experiment. So we added 10 more devices, we reached 20 devices. And here we have the um, varying clients per round over Ethernet and over Wi-Fi. S refers to the varying clients, so we start with 5 devices. We perform the experiment with 10 devices and with 20. What we can observe from this uh, figure on the left hand side is that increasing the number of devices over Ethernet doesn't show um, a great improvement. The accuracy is almost the same for all three cases. While on the Wi Fi case, uh, we can see that the 20 devices perform better compared to the other two simulated scenarios. Uh, because we presume that uh, aggregating the weights and having more uh, communicational um, devices, more uh, high computing devices, um, made the server to aggregate more information uh, in a better way. We cannot clearly uh, say that for the Ethernet case, but here uh, we presume that this is the reason that uh, it happens. Moreover, we introduced two um, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, scenarios as, an, as extensions to the standard federated learning uh, scheme, where basically we have a peer-to-peer -peer side processing method for clients, where each device trains the model and processes the results of itself and of other peers and we have an algorithmic scheme for peer-to-peer -peer federated learning where each device trains the model and exchanges their results with other devices as well as the uh, weights of its neighbors. This is, uh, we have the, the algorithmic scheme, the paper, but due to uh, time limitations we cannot cover all of it because it's more than uh, two pages in the paper. But we have uh, experiments once again and we have the table here which summarizes basically all methods. We have the FedAVG widely uh, known algorithm which is utilized for uh, 200 uh, communication rounds and it peaked at 62 percentage accuracy. We have the centralized approach which uh, ran for 10 full epochs and it peaked at 65 percentage accuracy. We have the peer to peer side processing method running for 10 full epochs, which peaked at 73% accuracy. And lastly, we have the peer-to-peer -peer decentralized federated learning, where basically the device uh, exchanges information among themselves without the uh, high-performance cluster server. And this peaked at 79%, which was the, the highest that we, we could get across all experiments. Uh, in the context of this work, we uh, simulated a real-world uh, federated learning scenario where devices act as clients. We can observe that increasing the number of epochs sometimes decreases the accuracy, but this requires further investigation and we want to perform more experiments in order to find answers to, um, to this matter. And we moreover propose uh, a peer-to-peer -peer federated learning scheme where the accuracy outperformed the standard uh, federated, the federated learning method while it peaked at 79%. And future directions of this work include the investigation of multiple realistic learning tasks, including computer vision models with higher performance, and the use of uh, devices with more computing power compared to Raspberry Pis. And uh, in particular, we want to use 10 smartphones in order to see whether the model will peak higher as per the accuracy. 
And lastly, we aim to use more efficient sampling schemes in order to further improve the client balance uh, method presented uh, in this work. That was pretty much it. Thanks for your attentions. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.